Eevee is capable of delivering amazing rendering results, especially with this new version. However, it takes a bit more tweaking the cycles to get to these results. So in this video, we're gonna look at what you need to do to achieve amazing renders in Eevee utilizing the new features in Blender. Let's dive in. This video is sponsored by Rococo. Now, one nice thing that you can do to elevate your renders is by adding caustic lighting. And if you see here, as I move forward, that's this lighting that's being refracted underwater. And this also can be refracted off of glass too. Now cycles support this, but Eevee does not. However, you can fake it and let's look at how we can do that. So here I have it set up to fake and Eevee and you can see here by moving this empty, I can even control the animation of it. Let's take a look at how I did that. Here on my plane, I have my material set up with my color here and plugged into that color is a mix color node with an add. And then over here is where the fractal noise occurs. So you're gonna want a texture coordinate of an object with the empty selected plugged into mapping and then you're going to plug in a regular noise texture, turn the detail down to zero, and a Veroni noise texture set to 2D and distance to edge with the detail set to zero. Then you can plug a value node into both of those to control the scale. And usually the larger it is, the better it's going to look. After that, you can choose a color ramp here and set your color lightness from lightest to darkest and control the distance and fall off that you want there. And then you can go ahead and use your empty to animate the fractal noise across all of your objects. And what's happening here is that we are adding all this on top of our object through this mixed color. So this is a great way to fake it in Eevee. Now subsurface scattering is when light hits an object, bounces around, and then kind of passes through wax candles or ears. You can see it here on my character if I turn it down, how that light is passing through that ear when that subsurface is turned up. This is something that's kind of difficult to accomplish in Eevee as it requires a lot of calculations, normally only active in ray tracing engines like Cycles but we can fake it. Let's take a look at how. Great, so I've converted this scene to AV, and now we're going to look at how to fake subsurface scattering. So first what I've done is select certain portions of my character and duplicated the material and named it SSS. So what I've done is taken the ears and the nose and separated those. Now, if I come over here into the shader editor, you can see that I have, in my case, an image texture. You may just have a color plugged into the base color here. But in between there, I've added a mix color node and then a hue and saturation node. So essentially that color is going into hue and saturation node to go down here to B, and then it's going directly into A. And if I tweak the hue here, so set it to something like 0.475, and I turn up this factor here, you can see how it's kind of giving me that warm look, almost like light could be passing through it, but it's just doing a wash over everything. So we're actually going to use this layer weight node. And if I hit control shift there, you can see what it is doing. So I could turn that blend up to something like 0.7. And if I plug that here into my factor and then plug this node back in here, you can see now that we're getting this nice kind of redder outer edge. And if I want, I can turn that value up to something like 1.25 and brighten it up, maybe all the way up to two and make it look like light is kind of passing through my character. Rococo provided me a full set of their suit with facial motion capture, hand capture, and body capture. Now Rococo uses a system of magnets and inertial sensors, meaning you don't need markers or cameras, which is awesome because what this means is that anywhere with a laptop, computer, or Wi-Fi connection, you can record high quality motion capture data without the need of a multi-million dollar studio. If you're familiar with Ian Huberts and his Blender channel, he uses it in his videos to help motion capture and apply that data to some of his humanoid characters. I've actually been using this on some of my VR work for prototyping and recording my hands to be in the foreground. Rococo offers incredibly high quality studio level motion capture data at a much more affordable price than the competition. Now, if you're not interested in buying an entire motion capture setup, you can actually check out their library which has affordable options to download a ton of animations that you can use in your games, animations, visual effects, and more. If you're interested in checking out Rococo, check out their Indie Bundle, which is 40% off now and an additional 5% with the code you see below. Everything's linked in the description below. Now, glass has always looked great in cycles, but been difficult to pull off in Eevee. Here you can see I have a glass bottle with a ship inside with some beautiful lighting. And if I switch over to Eevee here, you can see that it's completely opaque. So let's look at how we can remedy that. Well, first, what we can do is come here to our glass settings under the material. We can change our render method to dithered and set transparency ray trace transmissions to on. Now we can kind of see our bottle, but it's still not really looking like glass. Well, I've noticed that Eevee handles the alpha transparency much better than the glass transparency. And you can see here that it's starting to work, but we're almost getting this kind of ghostly see-through. So let's go ahead and do a little trick. 
what we're going to do is use the layer weight here. And we can set that layer weight value to something really low, like 0.1. And you can see that what that's going to do is all the faces facing the camera are going to be dark. Let's go ahead here and plug our material setup back in. And we can plug this facing into the alpha. And you can see that that's starting to work, but we want a bit more control. So we're going to add a color ramp, drag that over there. And we want to bring in back some of that glass because it's still looking a bit too transparent. So if we bring back in that glass, you can see now we're starting to get some of that kind of ray trace transmissions there on the outer edge. And our sitter is much more visible because of that alpha. But we can go ahead, grab this black value here and just bump this up into gray. And then that way it won't completely knock out the glass. And you can see there we have a much more pleasing glass render. One way to greatly improve your EV renders is to bake lighting from cycles into the image textures and load them into your scene. A great example of doing this is in video games. They will bake the lighting into the environments and then only apply the lights to the characters. And this really helps add to the realism. The problem is that Blender makes the whole baking process so cumbersome, which is why I love this add-on called Simple Bake. And what it does is adds this little render menu here where I can add my options, set it to Cycles Bake, come down here. There are other options you could do, but most of the default settings work. And when I click Bake here, what it'll do is begin baking those textures in the background and then it will automatically apply those textures for me. And now if I switch to material view, I can see that all those are baked in. So when I come over here to Eevee, I can see that all of my cycles, shadows, and materials have been baked in. Then what I could do is add my character to the scene. So this is a way that you can kind of get some better lighting baked right into Eevee. Now we've already covered this on this channel a few times, but it's worth mentioning that Blender 4.3 added light linking, which is an amazing new feature previously exclusive to cycles. What light linking does is allow you to link lights to certain objects so that you can include or exclude those lighting effects on those objects. It also works on shadows. This is great for providing artistic control in your scenes. Some great use case scenarios of this are if you have a character on a background and you want to add a backlight for some separation, but you don't want it to ruin the rest of the scene. You can really just put a big bright light behind them and make sure that they are linked to that object so it only lights that object. It's pretty simple to implement. You just grab the lights and you grab your object, hit Control L, and then you come down here to the bottom where you can link and include or exclude those objects from these lights. One super fast tip here, if you come over to the render settings, twirl down depth of field, you can turn on jitter camera and this will help improve the depth of field in your scene. Let's talk about the new ray trace settings in Blender EV 4.3. So here my render is in cycles and if I switch it over to EV, you can see that it looks nice, but it's definitely lacking. And what we want to do is activate ray tracing. So previously they used light probes, which is still an option here, but now we have screen trace and you can see immediately how that looks better. What you may not understand is how these resolution settings work. It's actually not the larger number that is better. It's actually the lower number because this is saying this is full resolution at one to one, whereas this is saying this is one sixteenth of a resolution. So if I set that to one, that's going to look a bit better. Then I can come down here under screen tracing and turn my precision up to one. And then I can come down here to denoising. You can have this on or off, that's up to you. And then down here, we have fast chi approximation. So this is the global illumination, and this plays a large role in the quality of the rendering as well. So we can also change the resolution here to one. And this is really where we can start controlling things. By turning up the rays, you can set a number like 12, and then also crank up those steps to something like 16. And you can see how that's immediately starting to change the scene as it's calculating more rays. Likewise, we can go ahead and turn up that precision there, further enhancing the quality. Now, there's a method here called global illumination or ambient inclusion. Ambient inclusion is what EV previously used and global illumination is the new setting. And then down here, we have distance and thickness that we can change. For the most part, you can leave these to the default settings. However, you may wanna play with these if you're getting some weird rendering glitches, but that's a quick way you can just immediately improve your renders. Now, another thing you should be using are the new multi-pass settings in Eevee here. So here I can turn on, for example, Mist. If you come over here under the render pass, you can even view those individually. So you can see here, Mist is giving me that fall off. So I will come back here to the combined, turn my compositor on to just camera. And with the Mist plugged into a color ramp, plugged into a color node, I can then add fog to my sheen and control the color of that fog and also the distance of that fog. So make sure you're using these multi-pass renders as they give you a lot more control artistically. Now, one point where Eevee loses a lot of realism is in the way it handles shadows, but we have some settings to improve that. Under here, under the render settings, we can go ahead and change our various settings here. For one, we can increase the resolution of the shadow maps. You can see how that's helping there. 
We can increase volume shadows if you're using volumes in the scene. Now here we have rays where we can bump this up to a maximum of four. And then underneath that we have steps which will help trace the accuracy of those rays. Now this will increase render time, but it will also greatly help as you can see here. And you can bump that up pretty high down there as well to a maximum of 16. But there's more settings that most people aren't aware of hidden under the light. So if you select your light and you come under shadow here and twirl this down, you'll see that you have jitter, filter, and resolution limit. Resolution limit will help set the minimum size of a shadow map pixel. Filter will help with anti-aliasing, but the big thing you wanna do is turn on jitter. And by turning on jitter and overblur, what it's going to do is help with those soft shadows and rendering realism there. And the overblur setting here will help reduce the artifacts from that gender. So coming back to this scene, there's actually more settings here under your light that you might not be aware of. Under here, you have the influence controls. Now these influence controls are a new feature to Eevee. And what they do is allow you to control what the light influences based on diffuse, glossy, transmission, and volume scatter. So setting these to zero will turn off its effectiveness on lighting up that scene. So if I go ahead and turn this light on and off, you can see how it's affecting the scene. Now, adjusting these is going to mess with the realism of your light bounces, but it will give you more artistic control, which is sometimes more important when working in Eevee. So here you can see that this backlight is wrapping around my character. And because it's a soft light and Eevee struggles with soft lights, I'm not super happy with how it's kind of creating these artificial highlights on the normal map there. So since this is a glossy diffuse material, what I can do is lower these. So I'm gonna set my glossy to something like 0.5 and maybe it might diffuse to 0.75. And I can even turn that glossy down a bit more. And now you can see I'm getting a much more subtle backlight on my character by adjusting these settings.